welcome to the Comedy Emulator. I'm your host tonight, Matt Lewis. So glad everybody came out. <laughs> uh, okay, before we get started with the show, uh, what can I tell you about myself? I am 37 years old. I'm 37, starting to do uh, grown-up things now, getting to that age. You know, anyone else? Starting that, yeah. Eating Mexican food sober now? Anyone else getting that age? Yeah. Uh, the, doing grown-up. I... Uh, Using laundry baskets, 37 years old, yeah. Uh, shopping at Costco, you know? Chopping up my own celery sticks, 37 years old, being a grown-up. Something else I did in my 30s, I got married. Got married uh, two years ago, thank you. I, uh, I married a black Jewish woman. Yeah, yeah, they make those, yeah. You find the unicorn, you ride that thing. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I, if you can't tell from my accent, I am from Oklahoma. When you're from Oklahoma and you marry a black Jewish woman, you get married exactly where your mom tells you to. That, that was Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> away from the friends, away from the family, just a Facebook invite for my wedding. That was uh, uh, the night before we got married. I, uh, I won $1,500 in the, in the uh, Rio Casino. I was uh, pretty excited about the $1,500. Thought it was going to last longer than the marriage. That's when I learned. Always bet on black. That was uh, what I learned from that. Uh, my wife, she's uh, she's beautiful. She's gorgeous, uh, and like beautiful women can say some of the stupidest things, and uh, that's why you have to hold them close, you know. Uh, every uh, and she's from another country, so I'm from. She's from another country. I'm from Oklahoma. And it works out. Neither one of us speak English well, you know. Uh, every Wednesday, she tells people, "Happy Humping Day." Makes it awkward for people in her office, you know. We went out for dinner the other night. She had a uh, she had some kind of weird energy with the bartender, and uh, she said, "I think that bartender is trying to give me the pink eye." <laughs> Just gotta hold her close to big scary city, man. Um, one more problem with the uh, with the with the marriage of two years has been the, uh, the girlfriend of a year and a half. That was a, that was a major drawback in the relationship. I, uh, I had a great opportunity though. This is one of those opportunities you only find in Los Angeles. I started dating a girl who had only been with women for the last seven years. And I was the first man she'd been with. And I didn't know if I had that much game and that much charisma that I brought her back to men or if my body type is just a smooth transition from dating other women. <laughs> Live in California, man. Land of the dreamers. Ride that wave. There's a reason I alienated my friends and my family to come out here, guys. <laughs> nah, things are going well, though. Things are going well. There's, uh, there's things I like about LA, things I don't. Um, it was a trip coming out here. Um, I had to take the 10 freeway to come out here. And if, you're, if you've ever been to Los Angeles, you know the 10 freeway. Uh, it's called the Rosa Parks Freeway. It's called the Rosa Parks Freeway because the traffic is so bad, you never get up and move. <laughs> real talk, guys, real talk. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, the traffic in LA, that's, uh, that's one trip everybody has about Los Angeles. They say uh, you have to find the silver lining, so every red light gives you the perfect opportunity to finish the text message. You started two lights beforehand, you know? You're not supposed to text while you're driving, talk on the phone while you're driving. Some cities in LA, you're not supposed to drink while you're driving. You know, we forgot about the main concept. You're not supposed to hit other cars while you're driving. Don't care if you have a chorizo burrito, you're listening to Power 106. I care if you're going to hit my car on the way home. Don't get weirded out about drunks, though. Sometimes drunks can be the heroes. We're the ones that overtip the wait staff, the bartenders, they like us. Drunks answer those uh, Hail Marys at 1.55 a.m. Those people love us. Drunks provide interesting stories for the rest of society. Who doesn't want to hear about this guy? Three in the morning on Wednesday night, shirt off, screaming at the top of my lungs in an Outburger parking lot. They won't take my order because I went to the drive through backwards. That's why I do. I take things to the next level. A little bit more about myself. Recently got a tattoo. Chinese symbol. It's a Chinese symbol for laxatives. Why? Because I'm making shit happen. Taking things to the next level. That's the goal for tonight. <laughs> After the show, I uh, you may see this online. I've got some merchandise I'll be selling. It's a belt buckle with a stopwatch. It's called a waste of time. <laughs> Taking things there. Extreme stuff, guys. 
Uh, more merchandise. I, uh, sell, I'm selling a kosher bottle of water, guys. It's called the Thirst Israel. Just fun little puns, guys. Just fun little puns. We're doing this for an hour. Uh, what can I tell you about stuff, though? Uh, this, uh, like I said, I'm from Oklahoma. It's, it's, uh, it's weird whenever we have tornadoes there. We have tornadoes. My friends always ask me, uh, hey, is your family all right? Did they, everybody okay? They don't know how the state is. And I, I tell them the same thing every, every time. I called them the next morning. They were already blaming Barack Obama for the tornado. Yes. It's the kind of energy I have to deal with. It's the kind of energy I grew up with, man, Oklahoma. Uh, we're having fun tonight, guys. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Um, I'll tell you something though. I uh, had a, had an opportunity. When I had the opportunity, it's you almost it's it's weird meeting a girl. It's hard to meet a normal person in Los Angeles. And uh, when I met my wife, I knew it was like a real thing. You know, I I was like I didn't. I no longer wanted to eat my meals at Seven Eleven. I uh, I wanted to I wanted to become a better man for this woman. You know, and. There's, there's, you almost have to, I don't know how to talk to women. It's, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about like, you know, puppy dogs and ice cream flavors and those kind of things or what she likes better, bed, bath or beyond. But I, I was trying, I was, and I, I felt like it was the right one. I felt like it was the right one. I knew it wasn't the right one. The next day I was still walking around. I was just floating, you know, you meet a girl and you're like just floating when you're like, you're like Fred Astaire or something like that or just, I knew she was the right one because I was walking down Sunset Boulevard and I saw her on a billboard. And this is like a normal woman. This is a normal girl. She's not a model. She's not an actress or anything. But I saw her on a billboard on Sunset Boulevard and I knew she was the right one. She was high on cocaine and had climbed <laughs> to the top of that billboard. And it made me realize Los Angeles can make things work. Uh, not everybody here is uh, married. I will say if there's any single guys in the audience, I will give you single guys one piece of advice. Never date a woman with too many tattoos. My first girlfriend in L.A. was covered in tattoos. Having sex with her was like banging an abandoned building in East L.A. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to get the show going. Our first comedian is a very funny young lady. She is a valued member of Ralph's Club. Put your hands together for my friend, your friend, Sharon Houston, everybody. Oh my God, you're the third Jew I've met from Oklahoma. So there's probably only two left in the state, right? Is that the deal? You guys, first of all, it's a very small audience here at the Drone Box. This place is amazing. Um, so if you think anything is funny that I say, uh, no pressure to laugh, just raise your hand. <laughs> we'll just do that. And uh, this place is kind of a wonderland. There's like, I was told there's a 24 hour taco joint across the street. There's a dispensary right next door. There's a donut shop. There's a gas station. You don't need to go anywhere. Like, this is heaven. All you need are kittens. <sighs> so, uh, it's very hot outside. Oh, wait, I want to say, I want to give a shout out. Somebody actually tweeted me after I tweeted about this place. So I don't know which camera I should look at, but his name's John Bow 81 and I just want to say, thanks for tweeting. You scare the shit out of me, but I'm giving you a shout out anyway. You might come kill me in my sleep, but you might find out where I live and come kill me, but thank you for paying attention. All right. <laughs> you, might, you got to address the fans. You have to address the fans, because that's all we have. Uh, on that note, anybody else feel like they pissed their life away, or is it just me? Okay, see that got applause instead of hand, raising of hands. That's good. You guys pay attention. Um, I, uh, I actually, I can't get relationships right to save my life. I actually just broke up with somebody um, because he, was, he, was, he wasn't very nice. He did everything he could to chip away at my confidence and self-esteem, which I thought was kind of like crappy. Uh, but you know what? I've got two words for that guy. Nailed it. <laughs> I, I felt awful. Really bad. And, um, but I had to uh, break up with him because he made a pee pee in my bed at three in the morning. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? With every relationship and every crisis, there's a takeaway. And here's what my takeaway is I learned how to get urine out of a mattress. And <laughs> I Googled it at 3 a.m. Uh, here's the secret uh, you actually have to soak the area with rubbing alcohol. And then you get a blow dryer, you set it on high, and you blow dry the spot. And then you take the mattress outside and you burn it. 
and uh, you laugh, but it works. It smells totally gone. Um, I just, you know, I'm tired of all my relationships ending at Planned Parenthood. You know, it's just, I'm over it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very humiliating, you know, because I like to roll the dice, so, you know, I needed to get che checked for STDs, and uh, I got my results back, and it turns out the only thing I tested positive for was game. Hey, what, what, what? Um, they're very sexy at Planned Parenthood. They keep it real. They keep it real. That's why I don't want to defund them. <clears throat> I love John Boner, uh, Boner, Boehner, John Boehner, John Boner. He called Ted Cruz a jackass today. Ted Cruz makes me embarrassed to be Cuban. I mean, honestly, he's the worst. And I'm not even a political comic or whatever, but I'm like, can't you just be Puerto Rican? Can't you, can't you be Mexican? Can you be anything but Cuban? Because, you know, oh God, we're very cool people, except for, you know, Ted Cruz. <laughs> But um, I'm, and I'm worried a little bit about, you know, I'm getting older and, you know, I, I, you know, they always say that you look at a girl and then you look at her mom and that's how she's going to age. You're like, that's going to be your, your girlfriend when she's 60 or whatever, right? And, um, well, it, that scares the shit out of me because my mom used to be, like, gorgeous. She used to look like Elle McPherson, okay? It's blonde-haired, blue-eyed. I don't know how I came out like this, but, like, gorgeous. Now she looks like John Denver. <laughs> So I'm like, fuck, when's my turn? Like, is someone gonna knock on my door when I turn 50 and they're gonna go, Sharon, it's up, the jig is up, we're cutting off all your hair, wear these ugly glasses, here's some sensible shoes. Like, I just, you know, I don't know when it's gonna happen. Like, I almost wish my mom was a lesbian so I wouldn't have to make excuses for how she looks. You know, I could just go, oh, no, she's gay. No, I have to go, no, she's not gay, she just likes sensible footwear. I don't know. I, I wish she'd paint her nails, I don't know. <clears throat> I, um, I used to live in Texas. I have a lot of family in Texas. It's funny because, you know, uh, I, my cousins, I, I have a family in Texas, and what they think is the funniest thing about me is that I love chilies. They think that's hysterical because they think eating at Chili's is like eating dog food. Like, and my favorite thing to do is when I go visit them in Dallas, I'm like, hey, you guys, I meet me at Chili's. I'm at Chili's. They're like, you're not at Chili's. So then when like, we're at a party or something and they introduce me to people, they're like, this is our cousin Sharon. She lives in LA. She works as a comedian. And you know what? She loves Chili's. Ain't that weird? And they'll just go on and on like, can you believe she likes chilies? Y'all, she likes chilies. And they'll go, my God, what's wrong with you? Like, they think that's the greatest, like, the funniest story to tell about me. <sighs> I'm like, it's much funnier to talk about the guy who made a pee-pee in my bed. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's totally fine. I, I have a problem with forgiving people too much. That's why I, I stay in relationships, like, way too long. Like... I know, uh, like month three, I'm like, I don't think this is gonna work out, but I hang in there for an extra two years or so. <laughs> so I wanna make sure I'm right, you know what I mean? I'm very stubborn. But I, for, you know, and my problem is, is I forgive, you know, like, like fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I'm gonna forgive you. <laughs> fool me three times, I'm gonna let that one slide too. And the fourth time, I'm gonna start emotionally eating. On the fifth time, I'm gonna show up to social gatherings crying. <laughs> on the sixth time, I'm gonna look at you and go, Wow, you get me, you are good, <laughs> you are so good. On the seventh time, I'm gonna give you 10 more times. Uh, on the 18th time, that's when I will have had enough of your shit, and I'll say, you know what, I'm done with you, y you make me sick, and I'm, I quit this relationship. This is my two months notice. Uh, <laughs> I'll train my replacement. I'm sure she'll be fantastic. Uh, I will continue to cover your bills up to $1,432 a month. Uh, if you have a problem making that car payment, hit me up, I'll help you out with that. And uh, if you need me on the weekend, text me with the word urgent and I'll get right back to you. And um, that's what I call a clean break. It's me getting out easy. I I, I, now, now young guys always want to go out with me. It's weird. I attract like really young guys, like 23, 24, and I'm like, would you please get the fuck away from me? Like the daycare center's closed. I can't with you. But they're so aggressive. They're so like, no, because they've got all that testosterone or whatever the fuck is wrong with them. <laughs> because there's something wrong with them. Or they've got a fetish. I don't know what it is. And they're really hot too, so I'm like, oh. <laughs> but then I'm like, get away. And they're very aggressive, but when they don't let up, I'm like, okay, fine, okay, we can, we can, let's, we can hang out, but uh, let me just, uh, I just want to tell you, do you think you, you can handle everything that's happening right here? Because let me tell you something, young man, I am four foot, ten and a half inches tall, and inside, I'm broken, okay? Uh, things have not worked out the way that I wanted to in my life, and I'm going to take it out on you, so get ready. 
I'm gonna break your dick. <laughs> and I've been breaking dicks all over Los Angeles for about four years now. Um, I don't want to have kids, so I'm not in a big hurry to meet the one, though. That's fine. Like, I don't want to have kids, and it's not because I don't like kids. I cannot stand young moms. I find them really annoying. As a matter of fact, it happened to me today. Somebody had their baby at an audition, and she was really cute. And I was like, how old is she? And she goes, 13 months. That took me a minute to figure out. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit, is my point. <laughs> like, I've literally had to go 13 months. One, two, three, four, five, January, February. Like, that, that shit pisses me off. You know, it's like, just tell me, just say a year and a half, say a year and a month, don't give me months, don't make me do math, okay? Uh, and also, they, you know, a lot of kids have special needs, but the parents don't tell you what's special or what the need is. And that freaks me out because I don't know how to act in front of the, you know what I mean? Like, I want to make sure, okay, what am I dealing with here, you know? Like, they'll just say, oh, this is my son Matthew, he has special needs. And I'm thinking, oh my God, shit. Uh, does he need a kosher meal or a helmet? What's happening right now? Like, are we throwing out the peanut M&Ms or are we building a ramp? How severe is this? You know, uh, whatever. I feel bad. I feel bad. I don't know what's going on in the world. I know that if I had a child, it would be special needs for sure. I mean, I'm of the age where if I got pregnant by accident, it would be totally by accident. And this is one thing that bothers me. Everybody talks about the miracle of life, right? You know, like how it's a miracle that they got pregnant when they uh, got artificially inseminated. <laughs> I'm like, that's not a miracle, that's science. We invested a lot of fucking money and paid scientists a shit ton of money and they spent years and years and years doing research so you could have 10 babies at once. Okay, that's not, that's not a miracle. That's, that's called education, that's called investment in, you know, science. Here's what would, and you know, the person that talked about having miracle babies all the time a few years ago is Nancy Grace. You know, her, she had miracle baby twins and I'm like, oh please, that's not a miracle. Here's what would have been a miracle. Hey, you guys, you're not going to believe this. Somebody fucked Nancy Grace. <laughs> There's your miracle, everybody. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Bring Mike back. I'm a member of Rouse Club. <laughs> One more time for Sherry Houston, everybody. Uh, I think my favorite episode of Nancy Grace is the episode I have yet to watch. Uh, going to keep the show rolling. Very funny guy. Uh, performs all over the country, all over the town. Very nice guy. Very friendly gentleman. Put your hands together for the very funny, very talented Tony Sam, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, fuck, a ukulele. Boo! Boo! All right, let's start with a quick song. <laughs> you gotta earn it if you wanna hear it. If you laugh at jokes, you'll hear some ukulele songs. That's, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say much too handsome for this voice. A lot of people don't expect it. It's like, uh, whoa, what, what, all right, what are you, you goofing on me? How you really talk? How you really sound? Well, these are the cards old T-Bone's been dealt. <laughs> so that's what I got there. A lot of women are always like, why are you, why are you so quiet during sex? And I'm like, is this what you want to hear? I'm already having enough trouble, lady. You want to hear, oh, 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 boy, I'm coming. Can we watch cartoons? Oh, it's the worst. You don't even know the half of it. It, it kind of, it kind of sounds like Homer Simpson fucked Kermit the Frog, something like that. They had an ugly voice baby, and it's in my throat. I actually, I met this, I met this young lady on Tinder. I'm not better than it. You know, whatever. And I met her on there, and uh, within uh, four text messages, she was like, let's sext. And I was like, you got it. And I was just, I was firing off filth, unrepeatable filth. Filth that would make your mother drop dead! But maybe on some weird level also be proud that you're that creative. 
She, I mean, but then the girl, she really liked it. She sent me a message. She's like, oh, this is great. And then she goes, now I want you to call me. And I want you to read those things to me. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, but she doth protest. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I will do it. So I called her up. I was like, let me see that pussy. Give me those titties. We never met. But some days I think about what would have happened if we did. So that's going on. I mean, it really, it's a, it's a kind of voice like, could you imagine if, I, if I'd pulled you over for speeding, I was a cop, and I walked up and I, uh, you know, I knocked on the window. Could I see your driver's license? You knew you were speeding. Uh, go on, get out of here. You nut. Don't do it again. Oh, my feet! Oh! He runs over my feet. That's, that's how it would end. I'd be the cop, he runs over my feet. <laughs> Gonna be a lot of funny noises during my set, guys. FYI. Hello, Internet, how are we doing at home? <laughs> What's that you say? We love you? Okay. Yeah, what do they say about the camera? It, uh... What does it add? Some weight or something? Ten pounds? Takes off ten years of your life? I don't know. So that's going on. You know, I got a pretty great beard going, too. Just in time for the, the height of summer. I'm like, hey, it's hot outside, but my face is cold. It's a pretty good beard. I mean, it takes a real man to grow a beard. And I always like to say it like that because, one, that's how I talk, I guess. But, two, I always feel like the, the bigger your beard gets, the higher your voice should go because all the testosterone in your body has been diverted to the beard cause. So, like, by the time it's out here, you're like, oh, ho, 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 scratchity scratch. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of guys can't grow a beard. A lot of guys can't do it. And uh, it's usually, you know, I, I have a pretty uncanny gift for pointing out someone who can't grow a beard. But usually, the people that can't grow a beard, it's just like this patchy, meth, this sick old cat with diabetes, <laughs> like on their face beard. It's like, holy shit! Put that poor cat out of its misery! <laughs> you shoot old beard face cats with a shotgun. <laughs> but uh, I love that first, I love that first week when you grow a beard because people don't know whether you're growing a beard or your life is falling apart. <laughs> Everybody's usually like, hey, uh, hey T-Bone, hey T-Bone, you doing okay? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I always wear robes. <laughs> Now, when did robes become the official clothing of sadness? <laughs> I mean, they just, I feel like robes are just comfy and they just were like, hey, okay, well, I guess we're going along for the ride. You know, it, like there used to be a time you could sit on your front lawn and in a lawn chair, just polishing a gun and a robe and everyone's like, that guy's doing all right. <laughs> that guy's an American. He's a real American. All right, you ready for a short song? Okay, here we go, here we go. This one, uh, this is called Bad Breakfast, okay? Bad Breakfast. Yeah. Burn my toast. These eggs are bullshit. I'll see your ass on Yelp. That's it, guys. In and out. Short song. I went, true story, true story. Went to a restaurant, fucked up my breakfast, took them to task on the internet. You piss T-Bone off, he takes you to task with words. Hurtful reviews. That's my specialty. And Eskimo kisses. So, 
that's going on. That's going on in the world. I'm feeling kind of. I feel. I had a. I had a weird day. Had a. Had a day. I had one of those days. I got my grammar corrected at a Burger King. <laughs> that's going on. I mean, are you kidding me? I thought. I thought that was a safe space. I thought you could walk into a Burger King and say anything you want, like supposedly. Or, or nuclear. Interchange your and your, the, the apostrophe one, and this the non possessive. And they're like, that guy knows what he's talking about. Get whatever he wants. It's like, I don't think we can do that. Do it. You heard him. Anyway, so I walk up to the counter and, uh, and I say, give me, give me a couple Whopper Juniors. Mmm. <laughs> That's how you do it. You go in there and you command respect. You go, <laughs> you go to the counter. And you're like, give me some Whopper Juniors. I always get two, because I like two, and I'm a man, and I can handle it. <laughs> and, my, and my friend, uh, my friend says, well, actually, it's Whoppers Junior. <laughs> and, and to make her point, she goes, you know, like attorneys general. <laughs> I thought these are fucking cheeseburgers. These are cheeseburgers. We eat this. It doesn't matter. So I was like, uh, well, actually, you're a cocksucker. <laughs> and then we had cheeseburgers and everything was right in the world. My mom, she never really corrected my grammar as much as said the completely wrong word for things. Uh, poor, poor Ahamplo. <laughs> she, uh, she, instead of saying Nintendo, she said innuendo. True story. So she'd get really mad because I was always playing Nintendo. And she'd go, Tony, why are you always on the innuendo? And I go, I don't know, what are you trying to say? I mean, it's not just funny, it's clever on a level that is, should be on TV. All right, let's have another short song, short song. Here we go. Here we go. Watch out. She stole the gnome off her father's lawn. Oh. She rubs her ass on a pole till dawn. I think it's safe to say hey, She's got daddy issues That's about an ex-girlfriend Crazy Cuckoo bird In jail, we don't know We do not know at this point We just hope for the best So, uh it's summertime. A lot of people, uh, I guess, enjoy camping for some reason. There are some. Uh, do we have anyone who likes camping here tonight? Do we have a couple? Okay, a couple dum dums. Is that right? A couple do dodo birds. Oh man, camping's the fucking worst. It is terrible. It is hot garbage. Whenever anyone's like, "Hey, uh, hey, Tony, you want to go camping?" All I hear is, "Hey, stupid." You want to smell like B.O. and fire for a week? You want that stupid? Hey, uh, Dum Dum, just wondering, uh, do you want to get woke up in the middle of the night by a raccoon clawing into your tent because your fat ass forgot half a Snickers bar in your pocket? You want that, dummy? Hey, uh, quick question, stupid. Uh, you, uh, you want, uh, do you want a karate chop at bees to keep them away from your ham sandwich? Do you want that? I went camping recently and uh, two bees had sex on top of my ham sandwich. I was like, what do you do? Well, you don't worry, because guess what? Old T-Bone likes honey. <laughs> I like honey on my ham. My favorite part of camping, I guess, well, the most tolerable part, would be uh, packing to go camping. 
because I feel like packing to go camping simulates what moving would be like if your entire life fell apart. <laughs> like, oh, well, let's see. Uh, I can only, I guess, take what I can carry. I guess I'll take this old sleeping sack and these cans of baked beans. Let's go have fun in the woods. the worst. Actually, I do enjoy, I, I do enjoy being in nature, I guess, to some degree. I, uh, I enjoy, uh, well, there's really no way to segue into this or say it in a way that doesn't sound weird. I like hanging out in parks. It's something a 30-year-old single man shouldn't say out loud to a group of people. It turns out that uh, just one silly sex offender ruined it for every single white male between the ages of 20 and 60. You can't hang out in parks without looking like you diddle kids. <laughs> That's what it turns out. But guess what? Old T-Bone plays by his own rules, so he don't care. All bets are off for old T-Scratch. So, so yeah, I go to the park, I like to read a book and whatever, I sit on a park bench and I always, I, I always, without fail, I see a family off in the distance, you know, just a mom and a, and a, and a dad and a, whatever those people have, a kid. And, uh, you know, and I see it, I'm like, oh, that's nice. I like that. I like that. And uh, I shoot them a look like, uh, huh? <laughs> you know, in my mind, I'm like, hey, I approve of what you've done. And uh, I want what you have. Kind of look like, I want what you have. <laughs> Give me it. Give me what you have. And of course the mom, she looks back and, you know, I think I'm doing this nice thing. And then she looks back and what she probably sees is, ah, 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 I want to fuck you and your whole family. Ah, 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 ah. Now, with that said, I can only come in parks. <laughs> All right, last song, and then I guess I gotta get out of here. All right, here we go. She took a walk on my chest. Chest. She sat on my face at night. All right. <laughs> She put her feet on the kitchen table After shitting in a dirty box Is she a hillbilly woman in a trucker hat Or is she just My fucking cat, it's about my cat My cat's done every one of those things without fail every day I love her, I love you, thank you, good night. One more time for the multi-talented Tony Sam. Uh, Tony was talking about camping. I, uh, I, yeah, I used, to, uh, used to, used to go out with my girlfriend, go camping. Uh, she, was a, uh, she was a rock climber. Uh, I had to tell you this, she was repelling. Uh, part of the reason we broke up, sex with her while camping was always intense, though. Ah, uh, quick joke, quick joke. <laughs> sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. Uh, this is uh, our uh, final comedian of the night. He is a member of a very esteemed club. You might recognize him from the Gelson's VIP club. <laughs> My friend, your friend. Put your hands together for Joseph Scrimshaw, everybody. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to oversell myself. I'm not part of any, any club at Gelson's. I can't possibly afford that. I just shop there because it is physically closest to my home. Uh, this is a really nice uh, space. I don't know how much the people watching at home from the internet can see it. But to me, this space is just that right, perfect mix of it's, it's very nice and a little exotic. So it's the exact right kind of place that you might find like a dead body in a procedural. I feel like an episode of Bones is going to begin any second. <laughs> 
and something is going to be discovered underneath me. It's very nice. Uh, I like to set, uh, start most of my sets off the way that I think things in life should be started, and that is with a warning. Uh, I want to warn you that I am going to be saying some adult words in my set, and by adult words I do mean swearing. I don't mean like mortgage <laughs> or fiduciary or anything like that. That said, fiduciary is a great swear word if you need a fill-in swear word. Just, you son of a fiduciary. Um, speaking of swearing, I am originally from Minnesota, and there are a lot of great things about Minnesota, but the best thing about Minnesota is that the educational video game Oregon Trail was actually invented in Minnesota. Yes, it is a huge source of pride because that is a video game that is all about leaving Minnesota. <laughs> it is a video game about people who are so desperate to leave Minnesota, they would rather die of dysentery. Uh, and recently I did uh, leave Minnesota. I did not die of dysentery at all, which was great. Uh, I came here to Los Angeles, and I live in Hollywood, right next to Gilson's. Uh, I love Hollywood. It feels to me like it's just, it is the world capital of tiny dogs and syphilis billboards. <laughs> And I love tiny dogs and syphilis billboards, so I am just absolutely in heaven. Um, been very busy since I got here to Los Angeles. I've been watching just a shit ton of Netflix. <laughs> I would say in the average 24-hour period, I watch about 72 hours of Netflix. <laughs> and personally, no judgment on others' choices, I prefer to watch television shows to movies. Because when you watch a television show on Netflix, you watch one episode, and if you don't press a button, the next episode just automatically plays. And that is like going to Chipotle, taking one bite of a burrito, and then the rest of the burrito just crawls down your throat. <laughs> and unless you press a button to stop it, more and more burritos will just climb into your body. It is disgusting and beautiful, just like Netflix. Uh, but I've been having a little bit of a hard time making some of the sort of cultural adjustments to Los Angeles from Minnesota. For example, uh, here in Los Angeles, a lot of people speak about their feelings out loud. And that's not really encouraged in Minnesota. Like uh, many people from the Midwest, I am Scandinavian. And for Scandinavian people, feelings are not a thing that you speak about. They are ingredients that you use to shove down and bake an anger pie that lives in your soul. It's very, very fun. I had a friend uh, describe to me what it's like to interact with Scandinavians, and he said, yeah, you guys are all really, really friendly. You smile and you say nice things, but you're still being assholes with your eyes. <laughs> and it is true. That is my cultural inheritance, is that I have asshole eyes. <laughs> kind of pisses me off because there are a lot of, you know, better cultural inheritance to have. You know, there are a lot of people, a lot of different cultures where there's fair, not the stereotypes about them are like really cool and exciting and intense. Like, you know, in a movie when three people are pointing guns at one another, that's a Mexican standoff. And the closest that Scandinavian people would ever get to that is three people ordering a pizza, being unwilling to say their preferred toppings out loud. <laughs> That is a Scandinavian standoff, just sitting there burying our feelings and shooting each other with our asshole eyes. Uh, I'm also one-eighth Native American, which is really cool. I'm very proud of that, but I only feel comfortable making like one-eighth of a joke about that. So have you guys ever noticed, and that's, uh, that's as far as I go on that joke. Stop there. So that's a little bit about who I am. The big news in my life is that I recently paid off my student loans. Thank you. The applause was instigated by my wife, <laughs> which makes it even more beautiful and special. I'm glad we could have this moment together over the internet. I'm very, very happy about uh, paying off the student loans. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars to get a liberal arts degree, and I often felt like is this liberal arts degree useless? And then, just the other day, I spelled the name of the German philosopher Nietzsche correctly on the first try, and I realized, yes, yes, this is totally useless. Uh, I got my major in visual arts, like painting and drawing, so obviously with that solid foundation, I felt really, really comfortable going into comedy. 
it's very nice to know that, yes, I'm a comedian, but I can always fall back on being a visual artist. It's like saying, I'm on fire, but I can always fall back on this hive of bees. <laughs> but I am still glad that I spent all that money. Uh, and I do mean I'm glad that I spent it, because I got a lot more for the student loans than I actually needed for my education. So I spent some of it on my education, but then I mostly just bought shit that I wanted. So. Uh, I bought a lot of records, I bought literally hundreds of Star Wars action figures, and I bought seven condoms. And I remember seven specifically because I bought them all individually. Uh, I had a very disturbing condom buying experience early in my condom buying career. I was dating this nice woman and everything was going really well. Uh, and I decided to go to the store and buy just the largest box of condoms I could find, like a sort of Costco-sized box of condoms. Like if you were building a shelter to survive an apocalypse, that's the size box of condoms I purchased. And uh, the woman, I think, just sensed this in the air. And immediately after I purchased the condoms, called me and broke up with me. And I realized buying this large box of condoms was sexual hubris and I was paying for it. Uh, so I got legitimately neurotic and I decided that I'm only going to buy one condom at a time. But that seemed kind of embarrassing, so I decided to always buy one other thing. <laughs> well, let me tell you, there is no one other thing that when combined with a condom does not make the condom itself more freakish. And I tried a lot of things. Um, for example, the, the aforementioned Star Wars action figures. <laughs> Those do not work at all. If you put a condom in a Star Wars action figure down on a counter in front of the cashier, the cashier will look at you as if to say, you're not going to be taking either of these things out of the package, are you? <laughs> so I tried once buying a, a hoodie and a condom, and <laughs> that was a bad idea because when you buy something that goes on the upper half of your body and something that goes on the lower half of your body, it looks like you're putting together an ensemble. <laughs> So I tried to just be practical about it, and uh, one day, like right after Christmas, uh, I bought a day planner and a condom. And that told this very, very sad story that I planned to have sex exactly once that year, and I just needed to pick the date in my calendar, like a sad little sex planner. Uh, and I finally stopped when I almost purchased a condom and a get well soon card for my mother. And when I almost did that, I realized I've hit rock bottom, I have a problem, uh, I stopped doing it, uh, I got married, and I just kind of forgot about this sort of condom neurosis that I had for a long time. And then a couple of years ago, I was doing a comedy show and I needed a condom as a prop for the comedy show. So I just ran next door to the convenience store right next to our house, the place that I would normally go to buy like milk and peanut butter and a plunger or whatever. Just grabbed one Magnum condom, nothing else, put it down on the counter, and the young woman working there stared up at me in shock and horror. And all of my fear and shame from this moment came flooding back to me that this would happen if I just bought one condom. And I said, the one thing that you should never say, the one thing that will never make a weird purchase better, I said, no, it's okay. It's for a show. And then I paid quickly and left. So I guess my advice really is just don't purchase condoms in any bulk. Just like make them yourself and start an Etsy store or whatever. Um, I was going to ask a question. I think I know the answer for almost everybody in the room. But uh, can, can you applaud if you're single? Excellent. Good to know. <laughs> just you. Just you. Just one. Uh, and how about the internet? Can you applaud if you're single? Oh, everyone who comments on YouTube, you're single. Amazing, Internet. Uh, I like to ask that question because I am always legitimately interested in the sort of demographics of the audience. But I asked that question a little while back at a comedy show. I said, uh, if you're single, could you please applaud? And uh, one man raised his hand. And it was, of course, funny because it was incorrect. But it was also like, that's how single he was. Like, his one hand was not even willing to get together with the other hand to clap. And it was sad and beautiful, like a little Wes Anderson movie that only I could see from the stage. I enjoyed that very, very much, all of that beautiful, juicy sadness. But I, I do think it is very, very hard to date. I'm super happy to be married and glad that I don't have to date anymore. I wish it was easier for humans. I think it's much easier for animals to date. Uh, 
and I will give you an example. Uh, back when I lived in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, we lived across from a nice little pond, and every year, right around spring, it was mating season for the frogs. And all the male frogs would spend a week singing their beautiful mating song. And it went something like this. The frogs would just fucking scream for a week straight. And I like to imagine that if I could translate their frog language into English, what they're actually saying is just, who will fuck me? Who will fuck me? I am the best frog in this pond. I could make it across five lanes of an eight-bit freeway without dying. Why aren't you fucking me right now? But of course, as humans, we can't do that. I mean, we can. We certainly absolutely have the power to just stand on a street corner and scream, who will fuck me? It's sort of like the really honest, real-life version of Ashley Madison. <laughs> just a sad guy on the street screaming, please fuck me, please. But uh, the, the animals do have, you know, a wonderful time with all of their fucking, and I wish it could be better for us. Uh, I don't think the, uh, the screaming is good in any sort of sexual way. During sex, the screaming is fine. But in order to get sex, like catcalling, I, I am not a big fan of catcalling at all. It is, of course, like rude and aggressive and sexist. And it just doesn't work. You're never going to get a date from catcalling. And you're never going to accomplish any other goal in life from catcalling. You know, you never see a man walk by a bank and then just go, Oh, Wells Fargo. Yeah, I want to put my balls on your low interest rates. Yeah, 6.9% me. Yeah, you dirty little fiduciary. Never hear anyone doing anything like that, which I think is great. Um, as a man person, I don't really get catcalled, but I did have a weird experience uh, when I was a teen that was kind of like it. My brother and I were walking home on a city street, and a car drove up, a bunch of dudes in it, and they yelled, Hey, you need this. And they threw something at my brother and I, and we jumped out of the way, and it landed at our feet, and my brother said, Oh my God, dildo. And at the time, I wasn't really sure what a dildo was. I thought it was maybe a character from He-Man. And I know it sounds ridiculous that I would not recognize a dildo, but I was like 13, and as a tween, I had never like stopped and said, you know, what would a penis look like if it was enormous and made of plastic and flying through the air at my head? What would it look like? Uh, but my brother and I just, we stepped past the dildo and we went on with life. Uh, but I realized, in, as an adult, that that's kind of like catcalling because I had an unwanted sexual thing thrown at me. Can you imagine if men had actual physical dildos thrown at them as often as women get catcalled? The whole world would just be littered with dildos. We would lose entire cities. Just Detroit is gone. It is nothing but rubble and dildos. We would live in a Mad Max type apocalypse world where all of the cars, all of the tools, everything is made out of dildos. Dildos, 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 as far as the eye can see. Dildos. Uh, and I want to switch from dildos uh, to masturbation. Because I feel like this is a set in LA and I, I've never seen an entire LA show where masturbation has not been brought up, so I feel like I should do my duty and talk a little bit about masturbation. Uh, I was not given any instruction or advice about masturbation growing up. And I know it's not a complex system, it's like three or four steps, uh, but it's only about three or four steps to like build an Ikea bookshelf, and I've fucked that up pretty bad. <laughs> so you can imagine what I've done with masturbation. I, I did have it sort of mentioned in health class, and all they really said is, it exists and it's okay to do. That's sort of like if you had a driver's ed class and your teacher was like, well, uh, there's a car. I know you want to drive it. There's nothing I can do to stop you. I just don't want to be here when it happens. You have passed driver's ed. Bye. That's about what I got. I got uh, this very, very short speech from a very creepy uh, health teacher in seventh grade. 
I'm not making this up. The man who talked to me about masturbation, his name was Mr. Handy. <laughs> and he was a creep. He wore gym shorts, and he called everybody gang all the time. And anytime you call people gang, you're creepy. And uh, we got to the point where we were supposed to talk about masturbation. He said, hey, gang, you know what? If you ever get to the point where you're just so horny, you're jumping out of your own shorts, it's okay and normal to masturbate. Does anyone have any questions? And this poor, meek little kid raised his hand and said, um, I, do, I have a question, Mr. Handy. Uh, do you masturbate? And Mr. Handy reacted by saying, ah! and sort of like falling back like a vampire exposed to sunlight. <laughs> Took a few moments, composed himself, and said, you want an answer? Here's my answer. Fuck you. Get the fuck out of my class. Get the fuck out of here. And he yelled at the child and made him go away. And the poor kid was not even being a smartass. He was just legitimately asking. So I learned very, very young in life that masturbation is normal. It's OK. Everybody does it. And I should be deeply, deeply ashamed about it, which works well for me as a Scandinavian. Thank you very much. That's my time. Joseph Scrimshaw, everybody. Let him hear it one more time. Ah, that wraps up our show. We learned a lot. We, learned, we heard some music. We learned about masturbation. We learned about dating habits. Uh, we learned where everybody shops. Give it up for everybody you've seen. Uh, Sharon Houston. Tony Sam. And Joseph Scrimshaw. My name is Matt Lewis. Thank you for watching. And roll the credits. <laughs>